One way to plan a vacation is to pick the destination first. The beach, or the city, or the small town that speaks to you in a relaxing or inspiring way. But a different way to travel is by starting with an event, a concert, a class, or a race, as the reason, the anchor for visiting somewhere new. Budapest, Hungary has always been mysterious to me. Maybe it's all the spy movies, or just the little amount I realized I knew about that part of history and the world. Budapest sits wedged in the seam of Eastern and Western Europe. It's one of those less predictable, irregular European destinations that occupies the in-between. And when I learned that the famous Budapest Marathon, the kind of race I've always aspired to run, lined up with a free week on my schedule, it wasn't long before I started wondering, what if a trip with a specific purpose could change the way we vacation as a whole? Travel is more accessible today than ever before, but to find the best experiences, the right vacation rental can make all the difference. For years, I've worked with the inner circle of professionals leading this movement. Now I'm going on vacation to experience their work in person, and I'd like to share with you our stories as we redefine hospitality on a whole new scale. My name's Matt Landau. This is The Vacation Rental Show. I chose my vacation rental because it was really reasonably priced and it was perfectly located, pretty much exactly where I needed to be for the marathon. Hi, how are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Finally. What do we so, got here? This is our building. Okay. And I'm going to show you the door code. You don't need to remember it. It's on the key. Okay, good. Hello. Morning. What you get here is uh, like small apartments with a separate kitchen or kitchenette, separate bathroom. They are in the, located in the very heart of the city. It's simple, but I think they are quite well equipped. We have two strengths here. Uh, one of them is our location and the other one is us, our personality, how, how we do things with my husband. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, I met my husband uh, like seven years ago and then at, at our third date he asked me if uh, if I would like to visit some uh, apartments. On well, the third he, he, date? Yeah, about, it was the third date, third or the fourth date. Okay. <laughs> because he would like to buy one. And I, said, I thought, okay, this is a quite strange date. date, yeah, but okay, let's try. <laughs> This property goes back to the beginning of your relationship. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's part of the whole story. Yeah. I like it. And then one more thing, he asked uh, me if I want to marry him here in this in apartment. In A? Yeah, in A. It was in A. Good. This is the ultimate vacation rental nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Taking his date to a presidential vacation rental property, you know, proposing in one. Yeah. I like it. Do we get to meet him? Yeah, we are going to meet him definitely. Cool. But now he's uh, with the kids, as we have three small kids. And yeah, you do. Um, it's always one of us who has to be with them. Of course. Vera, she's Wonder Woman. She does everything and she does it all so well. She's a mother, she operates the family's vacation rental business, and she provides this level of customer service that is as good as any boutique hotel you will find in the world. So if you have some time, then I would like to show you some things on the map, yes, like what we are going to see this week. But before that, I just show you that uh, that's me, Virag, that's my number. We have some some information about the dentistry that's open 24 hours. But dentistry? Oh, yeah, you won't need it. And also medical service. I don't think I've ever seen this before. No? No. So what I want to tell you is that uh, Budapest consists of three parts. Okay. There used to be three cities, Buda. It's hilly on one side of the river, Pest on the other side, and then Old Buddha, that means like Old Buddha, it's a bit north from, from Buddha. We are now on Pest side. When you are on Pest side, you will, you will walk easily because it's flat. Mm. This side is totally mm. flat. Buddha side is hilly, you will see it. Buddha, Pest.
Um, I am not a runner by trade by any means. In fact, I don't love running and I'm not that good at it. However, I decided to sign up for the Budapest Marathon. Figured it was a good excuse to step a little bit outside of my comfort zone and fly somewhere new and stay in a vacation rental. And I chose the half marathon, the relay, just so it's semi-feasible. Uh, and I'm actually, frankly, terrified <laughs> that I'm going to um, faint, pass out, maybe pull a hammy. Uh, but I have my team, I have my espresso, I have um, all of the people around me supporting me, and I have the whole entire vacation rental community behind me. What else could go wrong? Ever since I turned 30, I've tried to tackle some kind of sporting event each year to keep myself in shape, keep myself learning new things. So when Virag told me about the Budapest Marathon, a world-class running event held once each year, I immediately signed up. It's important to clarify that I could never run a full marathon, but the relay option in which you run half of it with a partner, that seemed much more realistic. Virag posted on her local Facebook group of hosts asking for anyone who might want to be my partner, and we were super lucky to find Laura, a local public speaking coach. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Anytime I said yes to you, to your crazy opportunity, it always turned out good. So I was like, yeah, why not? That's great. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what, what time the, the race was. <laughs> I arrived the day before the race and shared a pasta lunch with the race's marketing coordinator, Esther, who was a contact that Virag found while researching the race. Virag is great like this. She's not only an expert in going off on VIP missions for her guests, but she really enjoys it too. Finding things, securing opportunities, she really thrives in this role in a way that the world's greatest hospitality minds know all too well. It did not go unnoticed. I love um, doing this. I love like helping them and uh, like arranging these things. Like if my idea is like what not to visit in their list and what to add. So, you know, we get so much from our guests. Some uh, stay our friends on, on Facebook, for example, and we, we see what's happening with their families and we can comment there or, and, or just send them an, a kind message and they do the same with us. And this is a great tip for hosts, by the way, something Virag does incredibly well. No matter if your vacation rental is 10 or $1,000 a night, don't forget that local insight and contacts are something that any host can offer to their guests. It both enhances the value of the stay and it distinguishes your property from the property down the block. And if you want to innovate like Virag, click below to go behind the booking. Esther would go on to tell me a little bit about the history of the race and how with 33,000 runners this year, Budapest's running tourism was on the meteoric rise. The aim is to get everyone moving, to, to just get? get people moving. Everyone should move. And that is why this is a two-day event and you have walking. Even just for walking, you can choose between 400 meters and or two kilometers. So there's really something for everyone. That's neat. It's not exclusive. No. It's you don't have to be a professional marathon runner to be moving. Exactly. And you might see that everyone today, like even the littlest kid on the shortest distance, is walking with, around with a medal in their on their neck, and that's something very unique. Recognition, you mean? Exactly, because normally you get medals when you run the marathon, but when you participate in a fun run or a 2K, you don't get medals for it. Mm. But here, every achievement is the same. Mm. So if you run. 400 meters or you run 43 kilometers, for you, that's the same I like that. Thing. Yeah. It's relative. Yes. She even introduced me to her father, the head honcho. We are not Berlin, we are New York City, not Chicago, not Tokyo, of course. But uh, it's a very nice city. I think it's a good, very good organization. Very good, very special Hungarian atmosphere on the course. All right and now, ladies and gentlemen, still Lars on end center. So I think it's very good. Reason why, more and more foreign and more and more Hungarian. He passed through the, the eight eight kilometer. Kilometer. Laura got our relay off to an amazing start, but it was extra nerve-wracking for me seeing the race begin and having to wait for the transition. Go Laura, go Laura, go Laura. Go. 
When I finally did get the handoff, which went down precisely the opposite way we had practiced it. All of a sudden, the anxiety subsided and I just started to flow. I got into a really good groove, almost losing track of time and place in that way that sport and sometimes music or art can produce. Every few miles I'd see Stu, the director of the show on his own motorcycle. This was like a dream come true for a wannabe athlete like me, having a motorcade tracking your every move. I developed the kind of rhythm in my head and pretty much didn't let up till the end of the race. I feel very special right now. The Budapest Marathon was one of the coolest sporting events I've ever done. It was really hard, I'll admit, but it wasn't so difficult that I couldn't actually enjoy the progress and the process as a whole. The organization of the event with hydration stations and volunteers, it was all top class. The iconic views of Budapest framed in the sun with spectators cheering for miles. I could not have asked for a more purposeful day in town. Denmark, yeah. welcome to the finish line. Yeah, man! A lot of, lot of guests from there. Good job. <laughs> that evening after a light walk around, I fell asleep at about 8 p.m. and I slept like a rock. And this is a great tip for travelers, by the way. If you are gonna book a trip with a purpose, be sure to give yourself some time to explore the region outside of your activity or event. In my case, in Budapest, it was like a vacation within a vacation. It was the perfect complement to an incredible race. This is literally the only way, only place I feel comfortable with this camera and this entire institution. One of the things that makes Budapest unique is its thermal waters, which have been channeled and packaged for leisure and medicinal pursuits now for more than a century. It's known as the city of spas. When you enter one for the first time, you quickly realize this is not your local Elizabeth Arden. Virag put us in touch with the closest spot where two guides gave us a full walking tour. <laughs> Becoming an expert at this. Oh, I want that rub. It comes with thermal water and after that they're taking it to your back. Yes, and I have a rest. Yeah. Mud. Yeah. Mud. Vito. Mm-hmm. Mud bath. The steam baths here are a culture built into the daily itinerary of people who work in Budapest. You've been in a lot. Yeah, but not like this. <laughs> like I've been in like the Marriott and the Radisson spa. No mosaics or beer baths. I love steam rooms. It's one of my absolute favorite, most relaxing things to do. But these were intense. I'd never seen steam rooms like this before, and I have to admit, it was a little embarrassing going in with a camera. Strange bald man wearing a Speedo going underneath the water with his GoPro. <laughs> Hundred year old caves with natural jacuzzis varying from hot to, I think my skin might be boiling. The old school steam rooms were hot enough to cook a lobster and this incredible freezing water dunk tank that slams your system into overdrive. If I lived in Budapest, I would come and do the hot cold thing every single day. I can see why Hungarians consider it such an important part of daily life. It makes you feel fresh and rejuvenated, like you've been reborn. What is all the selection of drinks? 
I don't know. It's I stuff we stuff we funny. accumulated throughout the years. I think there's stuff that's maybe 20 years is old. That, is that a, a plum palinka? Oh, this oh, is this is a special palinka that family. that my your family palinka. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. If it stays in your mouth, it too long. It's going to go to your head. It has to go down to your stomach oh, as, okay. as quickly as, pos as okay. you possibly can. Okay. <laughs> so this is Matt. All right. <laughs> That's huge, Kate. This is mine. And this is too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So in Hungarian, since it's a very simple language, we say Egeshigedre. <laughs> Egeshigedre. Also on the Buddha side of town lives another vacation rental professional, Katie. She works closely with Virag, and took an afternoon off to show me her vacation rental properties, which, cuteness morning, had her mother included. How are you? Thank you. Nice to meet uh, you. I don't speak English. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Buda is totally different from Pest. It's much greener, it has much more of a suburban feel, lots of hills. After a lovely afternoon walk, Katie and I made our way to the most incredible restaurant that she frequents when she's in town. Seeing other Inner Circle members is always great. Katie is a pioneer in her own right. I'm a professional tour guide. I like calling myself a co-traveler for people who are ready to share their couple of days or, or even longer time or just one half day, whatever, with me. And I, I, I also call myself a storyteller <laughs> as for you know, uh, for any of my guests or my kids or my friends, I love uh, listening to stories, different stories, and I love retelling stories or just telling or even just making up stories. I'm also a teacher, so I just love doing that. Something not many people know about me is that I'm Jewish. Now, granted, I'm not a very good Jew. While I've had a bar mitzvah and I do know how to celebrate Hanukkah, I don't go to synagogue nearly as much as I should, and I possess an embarrassing lack of information about my religion as a whole. So when Virag suggested I go on a tour to the Jewish Quarter, a Budapest neighborhood that's been through ups and downs of pride and persecution over the decades, I saw it as a great chance to learn a little bit more about my heritage and an excuse to meet someone new and learn about a vibrant part of the city. My guide, Timmy, had an encyclopedic understanding of what this famous neighborhood can mean to its residents and its visitors. There are things, you know, like must-sees in the city that I could show you, or so many things, but why shouldn't I show the, the things I love best? Because I'm so much connected to, to, to those places or those things, or people, memories, the people who find me through my webpage or whatever, somehow they are people I have um, something in common with. And that's the best thing in, in this whole story. For me, it's, it's much more than a, no, it's not a job. It's, it's something I love doing. Timmy pointed out some of the more subtle details. Menorahs woven into the facades of buildings small plaques and commemorative stones that I would have passed right by if I didn't have a local expert with me. You just look at the building and if you want to see, if you know what to see, you, you see it. Timmy took me to one of the less famous synagogues in town, a place she remembers fondly as a child. I adore those um, Moorish romantic synagogues all over Europe, but this one is completely different because it's the synagogue version of the neighborhood. It's eclectic. So it's not complete 100% uh, art nouveau or art deco or this or that, but it's a little bit of uh, the mixture of the two and um, very Hungarian at the same time. I love it. We finished our tour with maybe the one of the weirdest lunches I've eaten in all of my travels. That's the only one that you are not allowed to eat, okay. the, the catfish. So I can eat the rooster testicle. Yeah. I can eat the rooster heart. Yeah. Gizzards. Yeah. I can eat the rooster pate. Well, if you were kosher, you couldn't eat any of these, not even right? catfish. Is that right? <laughs> yes. It's hard to describe what I felt with Timmy that morning in the Jewish quarter. Her openness about culture and her passion for the people and the history. It was an experience that transcended tourism for me, spoke directly to where I'm from, 
and it really helped provide some context for who I am. That night I got to see another side of Budapest. Eric's a young Hungarian who I was actually introduced to through Henrietta, a Hungarian-born host in season one of the show, based in Rome. I don't buy regular tours. Everybody wants to know dates. Yeah, I don't numbers. like. I like irregular tours too. I'm I'm your style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I prefer that you want something, you would know what you want, but you don't know where to get it, and then you have somebody who knows where to get it. That's you, it. You're a guy. <laughs> Like many evolving neighborhoods, what spurred development and attention in Budapest is most famously nightlife and what are called ruin pubs. Big old buildings that were left to decay after the fall of communism. They've only over the last decade been converted into bars and nightclubs. Each room of what used to be communist era living quarters is now this haphazard compartmentalized world unto itself. And the night is not just about getting drunk. Uh, you, need, uh, you need to see something for real. You need something special that you won't see next day. Irregular is about something that is given personally. Eric had a profound understanding of the culture in Budapest. He explained that we'd be enjoying an evening of what he called irregular tourism, the avoidance of mainstream landmarks in favor of the more unusual aspects. For starters, we hopped into these bicycle rickshaws operated by two of Eric's buddies. It was a most irregular way to learn about Budapest's Heroes Square. These are incredible. <laughs> a most irregular place to have a raspberry flavored beer. A most irregular dinner at an edgy food court connected by open-air food trucks. Eric helped me see what Budapest means to a younger generation, one looking to write its own story of entrepreneurship and creativity and love. Budapest is not just beautiful, but it has uh, really good prices, really good food, and traditions that you can uh, just really enjoy, like dancing, eating, drinking, these are Hungarian traditions, so you can have fun here. The next morning before the lights were even turned on for the public, I visited a cave. Budapest has this massive network of underground caves, which are best explored with Virag's contact Adam, someone who literally lectures on the subject, which is to say he is a verified cave nerd. The caves are only a few minutes into the Buddha side of town, and you know you're there when you see what looks like an old hobbit door leading into the side of a mountain. The caves were immaculately manicured, and Adam knew every last nick and scratch, pointing out living organisms, and these shells that were embedded in the rock, even playing a little bit of Enya for the most impressive reveal of the deep and dramatic part of the cave. You can enjoy it. because now we are in the so-called theater. We are on the stage, and over there you can see the auditorium. That is the emergency exit. <laughs> <laughs> the income would be really, really low because we have only one visitor, that lady with a huge skirt. <laughs> that is the only visitor today. So, unfortunately, we do not have Money. <laughs> cave jokes. Cave jokes, for sure, yeah. The caves were an environmental learning experience for me, for sure. But getting special access to them with Adam, not having to wait in lines, that for me was the most memorable part. The idea that for a short period of time, with a world-renowned cave expert, I had this special sense of place all to myself. And on my last night in town, I wanted to host a dinner at one of my favorite new restaurants, an opportunity to give back, if even a tiny bit, to the folks who made my visit so unique. 
and I knew just the place, the Rooster Testicle Restaurant, because also they serve the best classic Hungarian food in town. Yeah. To Virag yeah. okay. uh, and Budapest. Okay. No, and to everybody. And to everybody. <laughs> And as the dinner began to wind down, with several glasses of palinka marinating in my brain, I was left to reflect back on my trip to Budapest, a city I first chose because of an event it was hosting, and a colleague I'd known virtually for years, but now also in an iconic place in my memory. I leave now understanding in an entirely new way. And it kind of hit me that for travelers who like stepping out of their comfort zones, signing up for an event in a new place can act as more than just an anchor for a great vacation. It can actually be the jumping off point, the mental trick that encourages us to discover our roots, to try new things, to learn from people we wouldn't otherwise meet. In this sense, choosing a vacation rental like Virag and Katana Apartments was more than just a place to stay. It was the choice that made all the difference. Sometimes the character of a destination, sometimes the meaning people give to it, but oftentimes a mixture of both. This is Budapest. This is the Vacation Rental Show. <laughs>